Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make beer batter sushi roll using PBR beer. Now to make things interesting, I'm going to make the inside of the sushi roll look like sushi roll art and represent the PBR logo on the can. Now to make that, I'm going to have to create naturally blue sushi rice, which is never really been done. So let's get going. Let's make it happen. Okay, so let's start off by making naturally blue sushi rice. First thing you want to do is take a tea bag of butterfly pea flower tea and place it in some boiling water. And add a bunch more because you want it very, very strong blue. Okay, so butterfly pea flowers are blue and they create this blue dye that infuses into the water when you boil it with it. And this is a great way to get naturally blue dye. Just use this like you normally would with a tea bag, just infuse it in and then let it cool down. This is it when it's cooled down. I'm just gonna show you something that's kind of important. Uh, I've got here the blue dye in a test tube and some acid, in this case lemon juice, but could be vinegar. And what happens when you mix it with the blue dye, it turns purple, pinkish, reddish color. And that's what you wanna avoid. So keep that in mind for later. Now, to make the sushi rice, I'm just gonna add some washed sushi rice into my sushi rice cooker. And then I'm gonna add a pre-measured amount of blue dye water that we just made. Now, if you don't know how to make sushi rice, check out my recipe by clicking the top left corner of the screen or in the description below for the measurements and times. Okay, so just cook it like you normally would. Makes a funny sound, that. Okay, once it's done, you're gonna have this beautiful, light, blue-colored sushi rice, which is just awesome. Now, you're gonna wanna let it cool down, and then you're gonna wanna take your sushi rice vinegar mix, which is acidic, and you're gonna to wanna to add some sodium bicarbonate, which is alkaline, and will balance out the acidity. You just add about a half a teaspoon and just let it dissolve into it, and this will stabilize the acidity of it so it doesn't change the color of the blue pigment into purple pinkish. Once you've let your sushi rice cool down, you just spread it over it just like this lightly and cut it into your sushi rice like you normally would. Now, one thing to know is I've let this sushi rice cool down a lot more than I usually would before I add the rice vinegar mix because the heat would probably accelerate the food color pigmentation turning from blue to purple. Okay, so there we go. Blue sushi rice done. Let's move on to rolling. All right, so now to roll your sushi roll. You take half a sheet of nori like this and fold it in half. This is just to mark the center line. And from the center line, you wanna go just one inch to the side, two and a half centimeters, and make a cut. Okay, now you wanna take 85 grams of blue sushi rice and just place it in a log form across your nori. Now, you don't wanna spread it out because you wanna roll this into a cylinder and there's gonna be nothing in the middle. Okay, so now you just roll it up into a cylinder. You can use a bamboo rolling mat for eight, but it's not completely necessary. Once you've rolled it up, you just wanna tuck it in the sides, just like this. And then you just wanna put this to one side until you need it later. Now you take the other piece of nori you just cut off and you just cut that in half lengthwise like this. Then you wanna get seven to eight grams of blue sushi rice and just lay it across the middle line, going all the way across and evenly spread out. And then you just wanna fold this up into a U-shaped column. This is so that it stays together when I'm trying to roll it and I get more detail in the end result. All right, so once you've done that, you just wanna make the second column, which is exactly the same as the first one. Just again, take seven, eight grams of cooked blue sushi rice, lay it across the center, fold it up, and then lay it to one side until you need it later. Just leave it and come back to it later. Okay, now I'm gonna take some sea bass. This is half filled of sea bass, which I've cut lengthwise. And here I'm just gonna take my cylinder and slice it at the same length as the cylinder. So that I have workable bits of fish. And here I'm just gonna slice again to make a nice rectangle and an excess piece, which I'm gonna to put to the side. And another excess piece there. The excess piece can be made into tartar -ta and put into another sushi roll. Just put these to one side until you need it. Okay, now take another half sheet of nori and you just wanna add a little bit of rice at the end of it. This will act like some glue to hold the other piece of nori. So, you take a quarter sheet of nori 
and you place that at the end of it and stick it on. And this makes a longer piece of nori, just like this. Now, you wanna take some fish, cut half a centimeter, just like so, and then you just lay it right here on your nori. Now you wanna take the rice columns and put one on either side with the rice facing upwards, just like so. Then you wanna cut another strip of fish, just like you did the last one, one fifth of an inch, half a centimeter, and just lay it on the bottom side of your rice columns. Now you wanna take a red bell pepper piece and just lay it next to it, and then lay a bit more fish at the end, covering the end of the nori. Now, you wanna take another piece of fish and just cut it about here. It's about three centimeters, uh, one inch and one fifth. And then just add another piece of red bell pepper at the end and one more piece of fish at the end of that. Now you wanna take your cylinder and just test roll it to see how far it goes. So start the seam and roll forwards all the way until the end of the seam. This way you'll know where it will end and you can add more fish or take away fish depending how it is. Mine's perfect, so I'm just gonna roll it. Okay, so you can see the fish ends at the fish and just keep rolling forwards. And there we go. Now I'm just gonna roll forwards more until I cover the end of the nori. Now you need that much extra nori because the deep fryer is a very harsh environment and you wanna make sure it doesn't unravel. Now just tuck in the sides and there we go. The roll is ready for deep frying. Okay, so now to make some tempura beer batter. You take 100 grams of tempura flour mix and just add it into a bowl like so. And then you want to take a little bit of PBR beer and add it in a little at a time. Usually it's about 100 grams of flour to 120 milliliters of liquid, in this case beer. So just mix it in lightly. Don't over mix it because you want to have little lumps of flour. And if you see this a bit too thick, just add a little bit more beer and get the right consistency just enough so I can coat your sushi roll. That looks about right to me. Now I'm just gonna take my sushi roll and I'm just gonna roll it in the beer batter just like so. You're gonna get your fingers a little bit messy, but that's fine. Don't forget to tumble it forwards to get, make sure you get the ends of it and then just keep rolling it around. And now you wanna add it into your deep fryer at 170 degrees Celsius until it becomes a beautiful golden brown. It should take about two to three minutes. And then you'll have this beautiful crispy crust. Okay, now just take it and place it onto some napkins to cool down. And let some of the oil run off. And then you just wanna cut it into slices. Now take your sharp knife and cut it into one and a half centimeters thick slices. That's three fifths of an inch. And it's quite easy to cut. There we go. Should get three slices and two end bits. Now look at that beautiful PBR logo in there. It's great, but it's not complete yet. To complete it, I've just cut out some nori letters with a tiny little scissor. It was very difficult, but I made it happen. And here we go. Nori is the same seaweed as used before to roll the sushi roll, just in case. So here I've got a P. And here I've got a B, and we're gonna finish off with an R. Okay, that's great. But if you don't want a corporate logo on, you can always just put a little curve, and a little dot, followed by another little dot to make a smiley face. Okay, now the nori letters are very easy to put on. You just get them close to the sushi rice, and they just grab hold of it, just like this. The only thing is if you try to move them after you place them down, they'll rip and tear. So make sure you get them in the right spot from the get-go. And there we go, PBR sushi roll done. <sighs> this is the end of the PBR sushi roll. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and you want to see me make some more sushi roll art and you have some great suggestions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to take a look at them. All right, thank you for watching. See you guys next week. Goodbye.